Reps actually put out on their website questions to ask. So Isabel Ray start you off. Like if you know what major you want to know, what opportunities, internships, awesome, go for it. But remember, if there are certain things that you're not sure about, it's okay to be undecided. So are you ready, Isabel? Are you re- ready to write some good notes of what to email these college reps about? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, great. So I'm going to put them in categories, kind of like what um, Babs did. And so like you want to know, like you mentioned before about, is it a good fit? So for some of you guys, you may say, hey, is it really part of the city? Like, am I in the center of the city? Am I more in the nature? I mean, yes, you could use Google Maps to look at that. I, my favorite question I asked all of them was, what's your largest freshman class because I still remember that large freshman class. Some of you guys may love that. Some may not. Let Ask them about questions. If you're worried about being homesick, how many students stay home during you know Thanksgiving? Like that's a short weekend. You know, is it affordable for me to fly out or not, you know, during those times? Anything that's about that. Now, I, do you think, Isabel, someone should ask like how, how off the hook the parties are there to a college rep? Probably not. No. Good answer. Good answer. Yeah, you definitely don't want to <laughs> do that. That is not something that one would want to do. So other things, if you're looking more about the applications to a big question that a lot of people are asking, if it's test option or not, if you are a senior, you are lucky, you know, easy peasy on that. But at the same time, if you are a younger student, right, a junior, a sophomore, a freshman, ask them if they're going to continue being test optional, you know, or test free or test flexible. That's something that's really important to do on that process. So it's really important to go and ask those questions about admissions, not just only about tests. Is one major more impacted, meaning harder to get into another? If you don't get into your impacted major, what does that mean? You may get some experiences, like I've had students, especially over the summer, like they get an email, they don't see anything. I say, okay, in two weeks, email them back. And then they still may not hear from somebody. You know, one thing is about college admissions that a lot of students don't know is big turn. Turnovers. Do you know what it, turnovers are, Isabel? I have no idea. That means like, think about like one year, there's a new teacher you have. Oh my God, I can't wait to have, you know, let's say it's Miss Kelly again. And then like, oh, it's a different teacher again. Like meaning they don't, the people don't usually stay in those positions a lot. It's not necessarily always true. There are some people who are in, uh, stay out of college, but a lot of people get promoted, do different career changes, do high school, different, you know, all this different stuff. So you just want to contact maybe the admissions office general number to find out because sometimes the websites are not accurate. But let's keep on doing those questions. Can we do a a few more before we wrap this up? Yeah. Okay. So the other thing is that's really important is that will on August 1st, every August 1st on Common App, the supplemental questions or the campus specific prompts will pop up. And if you're kind of stuck of asking, well, what are you looking for in there? Like if you're stuck on a question, ask. Just don't want to ask the night before. So this is a perfect time to ask those questions. Now, regarding about financial aid, you could ask some general information like what forms to need. But if there's something really specific, like, you know, hey, you know, do you consider the value of a house? That's something that goes to the financial aid office. So that's no, that's different. And yes, your parents and guardians can help you in that process. One of the things is too, is I don't know if you know the difference, Isabel, between a major and a minor and then a concentration. Do you know the difference between all those three things? I have no idea. I don't know. Okay, guess what? what? Nor did I when I was in your age. So don't worry. So that's why we have this podcast. So one of the things is when you do apply for college, you only put a major, just like what you said, like if I'm, you're interested in, you know, sociology or uh, social justice or criminology, but sometimes some colleges will have a thing of it as a concentrate. So sociology with a concentration in criminal justice, like it, it narrows it down and focuses it a little bit closer. So you could ask, um, is there more concentrations. Maybe the website is not as thorough about that information or what does that mean or what are those classes are. Um, so you could get to check it. It's a, sometimes a little bit easier if there's a business, another way to think of it, like if I major in business, I'm going to have a concentration in marketing. So business is so broad. Am I the accountant? Am I the advertiser? So that's what a concentration is, right? It takes a broad subject, but makes it really more narrow. Um, but a minor is where you could kind of study something totally different 
different. It could be a language. It could be art. It could even be theater if the school offers it. But it's just like a handful of classes. So if it may be a skill or an interest that you have. The key thing is a lot of kids definitely ask that on the emails, but you don't apply for minors while you're a high school student. You do that while you're in college. Does that make sense? That does make sense. Okay. And then I'm going to um, put some other questions out there that your dad would love, right? What is the success after re- graduation return on investment? So for example, is everyone, what's the percentage of kids getting a job right after graduation? You know, what's that rate? What's the internship opportunities available during college years? Is it guaranteed? And is it paid? Who doesn't want money? Um, does the school have a strong alumni base? And can you connect with some alumni in your major? Imagine if a school says, oh, we have such a great network. Well, all right, prove it. This is a really great opportunity for you to do that. And then remember, you know, ask any question that's out there. Maybe it's a question that you feel that'd be appropriate. If your grandmother worked at the college campus, then ask away. If it's not, don't ask away. How is that for some tips for uh, questions to email for the college rep? Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. A lot more confident that I can email some college reps and not make a fool out of myself. I mean, it's funny because a lot of times people would be like, oh, hi, miss. And I'm like, oh, you can just call them by their first name. It's like, what? It's like, no, no, no. College, it's a it's a professional adult life. So, you know, make sure the grammar's there. Make sure the email is short and brief. Nobody likes long emails. I'm going to say that again. Nobody likes long emails. Remember, these college reps have to read your amazing statements out there. Um, so that's something that's important to do. So make sure you just contact and Isabel, uh, you know, we look forward to hearing more about your college j- journey, especially she says August 1st is right around the corner, meaning applications are going to be a lot. I am excited to learn more and start this journey and applying to some colleges. And we're going to do it all together. So, um, I'm excited. I'm ready. Okay, let's make it happen. All right, until next time, everyone. Thank you for listening to our podcast. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your precious day to listen to us. So subscribe so that you could download this podcast wherever you may be. We're on so many different streaming devices, but also you can find out more information about College for All at www.college4all.com. We're also on Twitter at collegeforall.amv, Instagram collegeforall.amv, and more to come. 